Now you can submit your podcast's RSS feed to YouTube and the YouTube Music app in the YouTube studio. Here's how to do it. All right, so in YouTube, you'll need to create a new YouTube channel. And once you've done that, you're going to go to YouTube Studio here in the menu. Once you're in YouTube Studio, head over to the content menu. And as you scroll out, you'll see there is now a podcasts menu here at the top. I'm going to click on that. And there's a button that allows me to create a new podcast. Let's click that. And here you'll see there's a few options. The one we want is to submit an RSS feed. If you submit an RSS feed, every time you publish a new episode of your podcast using your podcast hosting provider, YouTube will automatically ingest that, create a video for it that will also be playable on YouTube Music. So every time you publish a new episode, it will be automatically visible in YouTube without you having to do anything else. All right, so I'm going to click Submit. Once I click this the first time, I'll have to accept some terms and conditions. It's going to explain how this feature works. So for each episode in the RSS feed, YouTube will create a static image video. Uh, so it's just going to be a video with your podcast's cover art on it and then your audio playing in the background. By default, any changes made to an episode's title, description, or publish date will be updated on YouTube. But the one difference with publishing a podcast on YouTube, as opposed to Apple Podcasts and Spotify, everything else, is if you need to change your audio file, if there was a mistake and you have to re-upload your audio file, Spotify and Apple will ingest the new audio file. On YouTube, you have to delete the video and re-upload it manually. Next step, it's going to ask you for your podcast's RSS feed. So you're going to head over to your podcast hosting provider. This is Transistor right here. And in Transistor, we have the RSS feed right here on your dashboard. So it's a URL that looks kind of like this. You just are going to copy that URL, go back to YouTube, paste it in, click Next. It's going to send a verification code to the email address you had identified in your RSS feed. So let's send that code, click verify. And on the next screen, you'll get to decide which episodes that are already published in your feed. So if you look at this podcast here, I already have 102 episodes that have been published. Well, I want these all to be added to my podcast on YouTube. So I'm going to select the first option here, which is upload all episodes in the RSS feed. Now, if you have sponsor reads inside of your podcast, YouTube wants to know about that. So that's when you're compensated to include a product or service in your episodes. If you mention it, if there's a host read ad in your podcast, they want you to check this box here. Then it's going to tell you that by default, your podcast is not published. This means that initially the podcast playlist that YouTube creates for you will be private. Once everything's been uploaded and rendered as video, then you can make it public. All right. So it's going to take some time. You'll see it's processing here in the background. And if I go over to videos, you'll see that it started to upload each of my audio MP3s and it's now processing them turning them into videos for YouTube and YouTube music. So I'm just going to pause the video and let this work away in the background, and I'll come back once this processing is done. All right, it looks like it's mostly done. It says that there's still one episode remaining that will resume tomorrow. Uh, I think we're okay to click through on this, and now I can set the visibility for the show to public if I want. So I'm going to do that here, click save. And there are some other changes down here like default RSS video visibility. So choose who can see the videos uploaded from RSS by default. So we can change that to public and we'll click save. Now I've set both of these settings, the visibility and the default RSS video visibility to public. But I think I still need to go back and if I select videos, I think I still need to select 
all of these and make them public here. So I've selected all my videos. I'm going to select visibility. I'm going to select public. Click update. I understand. We're going to give it some time to update all the videos and make them public. And then we'll test it out. We'll fire up YouTube Music and see if this podcast is visible there. All right. So now all of my episode videos, they're episodes in YouTube have been set to public visibility. And let's fire up the app and see if they show up. All right. So opening up YouTube Music, I'm going to search for the podcast, go to podcasts. It's not showing up under podcast yet, but under episodes, I see some of my episodes. And when I actually click on the product people heading, there's the podcast in YouTube music. And I can share that link. If I paste that link into my web browser here, this is what my podcast looks like on YouTube music on the web. I can play episodes here. This is Transistor.fm. And I can browse them. It automatically pulls in my episode cover art for each of these episodes. So this is Google's new default podcast experience here on YouTube Music on the web and on YouTube Music in the app. Some people like it. Some people preferred the old Google Podcasts app. Of course, people can use whatever podcast app they want. And in many ways, the podcast experience inside of YouTube Music is not a real podcast experience in that it's ingesting these RSS feeds one time. It's kind of sucking them up and generating videos of them. But it's not the same as a traditional podcast app like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Pocket Casts in that when you play an episode in those apps, it's playing the episode you have on your hosting provider. So when you update an MP3 or you use dynamically inserted audio ads or you need to fix a mistake, if I discover a mistake in any of my episodes, I can upload a new audio file and all of the other podcasting apps will pick that up. Or I can use dynamic ad campaigns where I'm inserting dynamic ads throughout all the episodes automatically, that works in a traditional podcast app. It does not work with YouTube music. They're just going to take your episode one time, ingest it, make a video of it, and that's it. You're also not going to get any of the traditional analytics you would get. You'll see here in Transistor, I get stats from Apple Podcasts, from Spotify, from Pocket Casts, from all the different players, even Google Podcasts. The one player that's missing from here is YouTube Music. So far, YouTube Music has not made their podcast analytics available to podcast hosting providers like Transistor, Buzzsprout, or Libsyn. So in order to get those stats, you're going to have to log in to your YouTube account and check out the analytics here. I should also mention there were two frustrating friction points when I was trying to get this going. The first is that after creating the YouTube channel, Google forced me to verify my identification. I had to send a picture of my driver's license to Google with my date of birth visible. And then I had to wait a few hours. They said up to 24 hours. It ended up being a few hours for them to verify it. And then I could move to the next step. After that, I needed to go through another verification step where I had to put in my cell phone number and they texted me a verification code. After my phone number was verified, I was given my intermediate features were enabled, and then later my advanced features were enabled. But there's definitely a few steps you have to go through in terms of verifying your ID and then giving Google your phone number. Not everyone's going to be willing to give Google their driver's license and their phone number. And currently, to submit to Spotify, Google Podcasts, which is going away, Amazon Music, Pocket Casts, Podcast Addict, you can just click a button inside of Transistor and we'll submit it directly to these platforms and you don't need to sign any agreements or do anything extra. It's really quick and easy. So a little frustrating to have to go through these extra verification steps to get your podcast on YouTube Music. The other thing is that even though Google is really pushing people to go to YouTube Music for podcasts, 
when you add your RSS feed to YouTube, your podcast is also visible in regular YouTube search and your YouTube channel will look like this. So people can also still find your podcast on the regular YouTube search and listen or watch here. If you click on this, you'll see it's it just gives you a thumbnail. There's nothing animated or moving or anything like that. And people can listen this way as well. So that's how to add your podcast's RSS feed to YouTube slash YouTube music. Um, once this is done, every time you publish a new episode with your podcast hosting platform, YouTube will automatically pick it up. And anyone that wants to listen using YouTube music or YouTube can do so. That's it for now. If you have any other questions, you can leave them in the comments below, or you can visit us at transistor.fm. You'll notice that we have a live chat widget down here. Click that, and anyone on our team would be happy to answer your questions. Thanks.